Hello everyone, Danas here with Action VFX. In this tutorial, we will be taking a look at how to do this subthermal or subsurface energy glow effects as you can see from this shot. In this tutorial, we will take a look at how to track a deforming object using Mocha Pro's Power Mesh. And then we're also going to use Ultra Zap and Ultra Glow from Boris FX Sapphire plugin suit to create the veins and the glows respectively. And then we're also going to create the smoke using Action VFX Energy Burst Collection to simulate a steam coming out of the veins. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so here we have our plate. Here what we want to do is we want to put the effects on the skin of his neck and the side of his face. So we need to track the skin. And as you can see, the skin is stretching and squashing around. So we cannot use normal planner or even point track. We need to use Mocha Pro's power mesh feature so we can get our veins energy effects to stretch along with the skin. So let's bring in our Mocha Pro to the footage and click the Mocha symbol. Okay, now we are in Mocha. What we want is to search for the best frame that will be our reference frame, meaning the one frame where we want to start adding our effects. Since I want the effects to be around his neck and face, I'm going to find a frame where we can see a lot of the skin surface. So I pick frame 22. Then we're gonna start drawing our shape using the X spline. We want the shape to be slightly a bit bigger than the area of the skin because we want to make sure that we get all the areas covered. Once that's done, checklist the perspective and mesh and then change it to uniform and set the mesh size to 15 and then generate mesh. Now we have this mesh grid covering our actor. This grid would basically track every minuscule movement on his skin. So that way we can get information about this skin stretching and warping. And then later use that information and apply it to our VFX. Next, what we're going to do is to make sure the grid is tracked to the face. So let's turn it off for a second. And what we want to do is to use our spline that we originally used to generate the mesh to track the plate. But first, let's adjust the spline to make sure all the points are on the areas that we want to track. Like down here, I grabbed some of the shirt color to make sure my entire neck will be tracked by my spline. And then let's turn the mesh back on and hit track. Okay, so the spline and the power mesh are sticking into the plate. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create a mat of the person's face and neck from our spline. This mat will later be used as the roto mask for our VFX. So let's disable the power mesh for a second and start adjusting our spline. So here I am adjusting the spline to only around the inside of the subject. Thankfully, because the spline already has the general movement on the track, I don't have to do a bunch of keyframes to adjust the shape. Great, so tracking is done, masking is done. Let's save and go back to After Effects. Okay, so we're back in After Effects. What we are going to do now is we are going to start adding our effects. So let's duplicate our plate here with the mocha inside it. And then let's go to the mocha effects of the new duplicate and then go here and click render and then select stabilize on warp. Now here what's happening here is mocha using our reference frame as an anchor to stabilize the part that we track. And then we're going to use this uh, stabilized shot as the base where we add our VFX. So then when we add our VFX, we don't have to worry about the position or it's moving around because it's going to stay in one place. And then after that, we're going to use the same method, but we're going to reverse it. So we're going to reverse the stabilization back into unstabilized. So then our effects will be tracked into the skin. So let's start making our effects. First, let's pre-comb this duplicated stabilized layer. And basically this pre-comb is where we are going to add our veins and other effects. So let's go inside and change the duplicated plate to guide layer. That way this layer will only serve as a reference layer inside this comb and will not be rendered out outside. Now let's do some tests to see what we have so far. 
let's add a solid and fractal noise and then we're gonna go back to our main comp and here we see everything is covered by our fractal noise so let's copy the mocha track from the original plate to our fx pre comp and again we're gonna go to module and render and then we're gonna revert back from unwarp to stabilize warp and then we're gonna use the spline mat that we made earlier as a mask so let's check the applied mat and then boom and then change the blend mode to classic color dodge and then feather the mat a little bit so this is what we have so far great we are getting there now let's make the effects more properly this time let's go to the pre-comp and first what i personally want to do is i want to get the mat that we have in a mask form so go to the mocha and create mask and now we have a mask on the guide layer and then we don't want the mask to animate so make sure you are in the reference layer and click on the mask path stopwatch to delete all the keyframes and then we are going to copy that mask into the fractal noise so now we have this mask here inside the pre-comp and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have more controls on the boundaries of the fractal layers. So now let's change the look of the fractal noise. I'm going to change it to dynamic progressive and then keep it soft linear and then invert it. Now we have this weird organic tissue look. Increase the contrast to around 2 to 8, brightness to 5 and scale it to 40. Okay, awesome. Now what we are going to do is we are going to create the veins. So let's first create a solid. And then we're going to add Ultra Zap from Boris FX Sapphire plugin. So Ultra Zap is a lightning effects generator. And one of the most unique thing about it is you can control the curvature of your lightning using these controller points. This will be super handy for our shot. So now first what we're going to do is we are going to turn this lightning into veins or blood vessels. So we want these branches to be more smooth and organic and less like lightning. Thankfully, if we go to the safe preset for Ultra Zap, we already have something that is close to what we want here called Swamp Thing. So let's select this preset. Awesome. And then we want to select our spline controllers here and let's have our lightning to fit our subject. Now let's change the settings, we don't need the glow, and then change the bolt amounts to 10 and width to 2. And then on bolt branchiness change it to 0, and then we're going to reduce the wrinkle to 0.2 to make it a bit more smooth. And then we're going to play with the curvature a little bit. And then we're going to zero out all the animation parameters so it's frozen in time and not moving. And then I also added some mesh warp to fit the veins better to the contour of his face. And then we want the vein to be occluding the fractal noise, so we're going to turn the veins to black. We're gonna add in a fill effects, and then change it to black. Basically what's gonna happen is the color dodge on the main comp will take all the dark colors and basically just erase it and making it occluding the fractal. So next what I'm going to do is I want to populate the skin with more veins. So I'm going to duplicate the ultra zap and make different variations such as this one. I'm making the veins going to his eyes and top of his head and then duplicate another one. But this one only has the small branches. So we have the tiny blood vessels in our effects. So if we go back to the main comp, see how the veins because of its black color now works as a mat when combined with the color dodge. But now the effect still looks a bit flat. What I want to add is an impression of bones or skull on his head. So what I want to do is to do another occlusion around where we should see some part of his skull. So let's create another black map and create a new solid and disable it for a second. And then we're going to create a shape of where we want the jawbone will be and then the ear and also the cheekbone. And then let's enable the layer again and we're gonna feather them out so it's not too solid. 
and then play around with the opacity of each mask to control how much occlusion we want to have on our veins. The more opaque the occlusion mat, the more occluded the vein is in the main comp. Now another thing, I want to mat out the back there so it's not too solid. So I'm just going to add one more mat on the back of the neck. Awesome. Now let's add some Gaussian blur just to make the effects not too sharp and more blend in with the background. And now we are going to add some glow and we are going to use another tool from Boris FX Sapphire Ultra Glow. Okay, so here you will be met by all these settings and a circle in the middle that controls the ultra glow's width. But for this project, we're not going to play around much with the circles. We're just going to go to the brightness and change it to 2.8. And then we're going to change the color to purple-ish color and then change the threshold to 0.3. Okay, so now we have our glow, the subsurface glow effects on our skin. The next thing we're going to do is to animate the effects to fade in. So I'm going to go back to the effects pre-comp and I'm going to animate the mass expansion of the fractal layer to have the fractal reveals itself instead of just fading in. And then I'm going to add some extra movements on the effects. So I go to the fractal subsetting and animate the offset. This is to make it seems like there's an upward movement from the energy. Now for the final icing on the cake, I want to add a steam coming out of these veins like some energy is leaking out of the skin from the glow. So I'm going to add this energy burst effect from Action VFX Energy Burst Collections and use them as the steam. So let's solo them for a second. And I want to find a time where the energy burst sort of dissipates. And then trim the beginning. And then I want to animate the opacity to make it fade in. Now we want steam to come out continuously but the energy only bursts once. We can get around that by essentially time them to make one burst to fade in after the other. That way it would make an impression that it is continuous smoke. And then we are going to position and scale the energy to fit it onto the neck. Now let's extend our steam a little bit more by duplicating the two layers and offset them a little bit. And then we are going to use hue and saturation to basically change the color to something like purple. Then we're going to track this energy onto the neck. So let's have our plate and in the mocha, we're going to create nulls from the power mesh. Now we have all these nulls that are created from our mesh grid. And then we're going to select one of them color code it just so we can see it better and delete all the other nulls except the one that we picked. And then parent our energy bursts to it and then we're going to change the energy burst to screen and now the energy bursts are tracking into the shot. And the last thing before I wrap up, I noticed that my effects is still not blending well with the background. So I'm going to fix that by color correcting the plate to make it match the contrast of the effects. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Once again, you can purchase the energy burst assets from actionvfx.com. Action VFX provides high quality assets for your VFX needs. Our library is full of VFX assets collections such as explosions, fire, energy, and more recently, crowds, and many, many others. We also have free assets that you can get on the website. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out the next tutorial. And see you next time. Bye-bye.